You know, if you ask me, Queen Otohime left quite a profound legacy on Fishman Island. I mean, she broke down the iron wall of fostering human fishman relations, as well as mothered four children, including somehow one giant mermaid princess. But in her spare time, she also campaigned fiercely to get all of you to subscribe to the Grand Line Review for regular One Piece content uploaded straight into your YouTube feeds, just as any true hero would. Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece and more specifically Sagas in Minutes, the series that aims to equip you with the basic knowledge to leap into the wilderness of One Piece. And today we are heading into the new world at last in order to examine the first block of post time skip story being the Fishman Island Saga. The Fishman Island Saga is the seventh in the series, as well as the first of the New World Era, which takes place over the course of two arcs with a total of 56 manga chapters and a very suspiciously long 57 anime episodes. So we are well and truly into anime filler territory here. But oddly enough, we pick up right where we left off on Ruskaina with a shot of the iconic straw hat, except this time there has been a two year time skip. And during this time, Luffy appears to have made quite a lot of animal friends. However, the point to resume his journey to become the Pirate King has come. And Boa Hancock arrives to escort him back to Sabadee in order to meet up with the rest of his crew. And good God, will they've all either gained weight, decreased in aesthetic appeal, or have changed species entirely from a reindeer to a fox. It's just amazing what two years can do to a person. Thankfully, these straw hats are all 100% fake, as a crew led by one Damara Black has sprung up during Luffy's absence to take advantage of their notoriety. However, rather unfortunately for Damara Black, he ends up accidentally encountering the real straw hat Luffy, which does not end well for him. No, not at all. But amongst all of this trash are of course the gems that are the real straw hats, all of whom have evolved over their two years of various training and the crew slowly begins to find each other and reform. Their ship, Thousand Sunny, is also present, thanks largely to Bartholomew Kuma, who struck a deal with Dr. Vegapunk to reprogram him to protect the vessel until a member of the Straw Hats returned to it. With that said, things are not all fine and dandy on the archipelago, because a force of marines and pacifista are on the hunt for the Straw Hats, which results in our first proper post time skip altercation, whereby Luffy, Zoro, and Sanji all have the opportunity to demonstrate how much they have grown by near instantly dispatching the cyborg warriors. As for the rest of the marines, various Straw Hat allies had gathered to assist their escape, including Luffy's mentor and former right hand man of Goldie Roger, Silvers Rayleigh. And just before heading off on his journey, the last words Luffy says to Rayleigh are, I'm going to do it. I'm going to be the Pirate King. Which brings a tear to the eye of the elderly legend, who then proceeds to engage in a sneaky flashback of the day where he first met Roger, and it is revealed that one of the previous owners of Luffy's straw hat was in fact Roger himself. Back to the Straw Hats now, and they have no real time to enjoy their reunion, as thanks to Rayleigh having coated their ship, they dive straight down to visit Fishman Island, with Nami flawlessly navigating their way to the ocean floor, only to be met by a band of representatives from the new Fishman Pirates. And interestingly enough, these pirates appear to be aware of the Straw Hats history, recognizing Luffy as the man who had beaten Arlong in East Blue, but they are also aware that they protected Hachan, and so the Straw Hats are given two choices, either join the new Fishman Pirates, or be sunk right here and now. So naturally, of course, Luffy and his crew take option three, which is to force their way into Fishman Island via a coup de burst, which dispels its coating and scatters the straw hats all over the island, with the first group waking up in a house owned by Kami, who was the mermaid that they had all met on their first trip to Sabadi. And soon enough, they also meet up with another acquaintance being Papug, who has become an exceptionally famous fashion designer, rich enough to have bought a house in the very ritzy Gyovali Hills. Whilst all of this is occurring though, a much darker side to Fishman Island is slowly playing out, firstly featuring the aforementioned new Fishman pirates, who are revealed to be led by a figure known as Hody Jones, with their intended mission being something of a revolution, aiming to take control of Fishman Island and spread their anti-human sentiments amongst its people, or I guess amongst its fishmen. Very notably, Hody and his primary crew members were heavily inspired by the ambitions of Arlong, who himself derived his hatred of humans as a result from his experiences with Fisher Tiger, who is, well, he's one of the more tragic figures in this world. Having once been taken as a slave by the world nobles, and even though he did manage to escape, Tiger would return to the Holy Land of Marijuana by scaling the Red Line in order to launch a full on assault of the world nobles. Whilst there, he sought to free as many slaves as he could, which which quite notably featured a very young Boa Hancock and the rest of the Gorgon sisters. After returning from this endeavor, Fisher Tiger then formed the Sun Pirates, an old fisherman crew heavily populated by former slaves who embarked on the mission of wrecking havoc against the world of humanity and providing a ray of hope for the future of the fisherman race. And this crew included many well-known figures to the modern story, featuring Arlong, Hachan, and even Jinbei. However, tragedy would strike this crew when they took a child named Koala aboard, a human, but also a former slave. As such, Tiger agreed to return Koala to her home island. However, the residents of the island returned this kindness by alerting the Marines to their presence, which resulted in Tiger escaping, but sustaining heavy injuries. And after refusing a transfusion of human blood, Tiger passed away, admitting that he could never accept humanity, but also asking his crewmates not to let their own personal hatred affect the next generation. And opinion amongst the Sun Pirates was very split on that last idea, with Arlong's personal hatred 
hatred spreading to Hody Jones, and the new Fishman Pirates were formed as a result of that. However, this group in the modern day also had another ally in their endeavor, who was a man named Van de Decken the Ninth, who had, I guess what we'll call a cripplingly unhealthy infatuation with the mermaid princess Shirohoshi. So much so that she had needed to be locked up for the better part of a decade due to his devil fruit powers and fear for her safety. But Deccan and the new Fishman Pirates then formed an alliance, vowing to change Fishman Island forever. Having briefly brought up Fishman royalty though, eventually Luffy and a cohort of Straw Hats are found by King Neptune, who invites them to his palace. At which point Luffy stumbles upon the aforementioned Princess Shirohoshi, and after a rocky start to this relationship, the two very quickly become friends and allies, with Luffy even offering to be her bodyguard so that Shirohoshi can go and visit her mother's grave. Now speaking of, Shirohoshi's mother is the second historical figure of grand importance here, being Queen Otohime, who acted as Fisher Tiger's polar opposite, using her life and position primarily to advocate for fishman human relations, and harboring a dream of one day living in peace with humanity on the surface. And her pure drive to attain this would be displayed one day when a ship carrying a world noble became wrecked on the island, which would have resulted in the immediate murder of said noble under regular circumstances. However, Otohime risked her own life in order to save his, and then went on to accompany him to the surface in order to discuss her dream with the rest of the world nobles. After returning, Otohime received overwhelming public support, only to be assassinated by a younger Hody Jones who framed a human for her death and thus restarted the cycle of hatred on Fishman Island. In the modern day, Hody Jones decided to attack the Ryuku Palace, which resulted in him getting ever so slightly wrecked by Zoro, even though the battle took place underwater. However, the new Fisherman Pirates did eventually capture King Neptune and held him hostage in Gyonkod Plaza, where they gathered their full forces, totaling roughly 100,000 members, and decided that this was the time to usurp control of the entire island. Also at this stage, the new Fisherman Pirates had accessed a special energy steroid, which powered them up significantly, turning Hody Jones from this into this. In the meantime, Luffy had escorted Shirohoshi to Otohime's final resting place, at which point they were met by Jinbei, who is quite shocked to see Shirohoshi, to say the least. And after a relatively pleasant reunion, things quickly turn when Jinbei informs Luffy of the complicated history involving Fisher Tiger and Otohime, as well as requests that Luffy stays out of this issue due to the long-standing Fishman grudge against humans. But Luffy, of course, cares not for such things, and the two get into a fistfight, which is eventually calmed down by Robin, and the group form a plan to stop Hody. And this plan is fairly simple. Launch an all-out assault on Gyonko Plaza, defeat the new Fishman pirates, and party the night away. And most of this goes quite smoothly, with Luffy knocking out half of their forces with Conqueror's Haki, and each of the officers and members of the new Fishman Pirates are defeated with great ease by the Straw Hats, who each finally get to show off their new post time skip skills. There is certainly trouble in one aspect though, that being Vanderdecken, who after being publicly rejected by Shirohoshi, used his devil fruit powers to send an ancient vessel known as the Noah flying her way, which actually threatens to crash into and destroy Fishman Island. And this would also come to serve as battleground for Luffy to face off against Hody Jones, which proves quite difficult for Luffy actually, because he is at a distinct disadvantage underwater. However, he does eventually prevail and then makes the decision to destroy the Noah in order to prevent it from crashing into the island. As it turns out, these efforts would not be needed though, as Shirohoshi then reveals a super special power in that she can communicate with Sea Kings, who appear and take the Noah back to its resting place, thus saving Fishman Island. And Shirohoshi is able to do this because as it turns out, she has inherited the power of the ancient weapon Poseidon, which is passed down through the Ryuku family line, thus making her one of the most important characters in the entire series. But following these events, the new Fishman Pirates and Vanderdecken are captured and begin to suffer the side effects of the energy steroids, which rapidly ages them as they all rot away in prison. However, Luffy ended up sustaining incredibly serious injuries, and as Twisted Fate would have it, he ends up needing a blood transfusion, which is a big taboo in Fishman society due to the whole Fisher Tiger situation. However, Jinbei swiftly volunteers his own blood to the human pirate, putting their bond on full display for all to see. And as Luffy recovers, he asks Jinbei to join his crew. And Jinbei says yes, but also no. He basically states that yes, he would like to, but he has unfinished business to take care of first, which is fine, I guess. I'm sure he'll be along swiftly, right? Right? In any case, the peril of Fishman Island isn't over quite yet, because two representatives from the Big Mom Pirates make their presence known on the island, being Pecoms and Baron Tamago. And this is because following the death of Whitebeard, Charlotte Lin Lin, aka Big Mom, offered protection to the island, protection in quotation marks there, under the condition that they produce consistent candy for her. And rather unfortunately, this candy production effort was hindered by the events that had just taken place. And so Luffy takes responsibility for this, claiming that he ate all of the candy and that he would enter the new world in order to defeat Big Mom and claim Fishman Island for himself. And just for good measure, he also said that he would become the Pirate King. So, you know, just casually declaring war against one of the four emperors of the sea right there. But to be fair, Luffy's efforts were successful as Big Mom decided to spare Fishman Island and instead target her full rage towards the Straw Hat captain. But for now, everything is fine and the Straw Hats say goodbye to their new and old acquaintances with the crew promising to one day take Princess Shirohoshi to the surface. And then they set sail in order to enter the final sea, the new world.
Next time on Sagas in Minutes, yes, we have finally entered the new world and the Straw Hats are about to take on a massive convoluted yet ever so epic chunk of story known as the Dress Rosa Saga. If you enjoyed this video and the content this channel produced in general, then please do consider donating to the Grand Line Review Patreon because the support of all of you amazing people is what continues to make this channel possible. And if you'd like to see more videos like this but applied to other anime and manga series, then please do feel free to check out my second channel, New World Review, for all of your wider needs. And if you'd like to join the fun at any time, then please do head over to my Discord server where a wide array of shenanigans takes place on a daily basis. And finally, please do comment with your thoughts on the Fishman Island Saga. This has been the Grand Line Review, and I'll see you next time. If you could give me devil fruit powers, which would you give me? All right, so oh, if I could give you a devil fruit, that's a unique question. Look, I'd probably give you the sub sub fruit, which allows you to forcibly subscribe people to the Grand Line Review and gradually infect the entirety of the YouTube landscape and then the world. That or I'll give you the power to make toast without a toaster. Your choice, I guess.